Hello and welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a mum of three from the UK. And today's video is the first in my Getting Started With Home Ed series. And this is for children who've never been to school. If your child has never even set foot in year R or maybe only even went for like a week, this is for you. <laughs> So this is where my specialty is because none of my children have ever been to school. They've all been to preschool um, and they enjoyed it for the most part. Um, they, some of them got more out of it than others, but they have definitely all been. So um, I'm guessing if you are interested in this video, if this video is for you, then your child is five or under. Um, my youngest is currently five so this is at the stage i am with him and our main focus is learning to read um once they learn to read it opens so much up for them and uh, once they learn to write it opens up so much up for them and then from a slightly selfish point of view once they've learned to read and write it actually takes a little bit of pressure off of you as the parent me um because you can help there is some work they can then do independently if you can say you know, once they can read all of the instructions and they can write you can say okay so do this while i work with another child if you have another child or why you make yourself a cup of tea or anything like that you can set them up and start doing some independent work um, with a little bit more ease than you can when you have to read everything for them and help them with the writing so my top tips for starting off home education with a child who's never been to school is one start off small um, don't worry too much don't worry too much about trying to recreate school I think that's a big problem with a lot of home educators especially when we first start out and even now I you know I'm five years in have homing home educated Charles from the very beginning who is now 10 and I still sometimes try and repli re replicate school and I have to stop myself and be like hey sort your life out <laughs> so the biggest thing with Albert is that I'm teaching him to read he's doing a phonics program um we are using um, a mixture of Jolly Phonics and CGP books. Um, this is the book that we are starting him off with. So this is the Reception English Phonics book, the Daily Practice book by CGP. And I had planned to start him off with the Jolly Phonics book, but it, uh, to be honest, I'm bored of teaching it. Um, I did it with all of them and it's just a bit boring. Um, it's very samey and it didn't really help Bessie and Bessie um, who is eight still is not reading independently uh, we think that there is dyslexia there which is the reason for that um, but we wanted to try something different and because her and Albert excuse me are at a very similar level I wanted to refresh Bess, some of Bessie's knowledge gent and go gently with her I don't want to force her into pushing to the next level and I just kind of gently make sure that there's no gaps and teach Albert it for the first time so we're using this book program um there is this beautiful <laughs> checklist at the beginning to keep an eye on you've done and you literally do one page a day for five days now these are essentially tests they are they go alongside the that targeted practice book I may get that as well um, but for now we're just using this um, and it will work with Bessie in the sense of very similar to how the mental maths books that we use for Bessie and Charles where they just do the mental maths test and then I pick out things or not, not mental maths not necessarily all mental maths but they um pick, then I pick out the things that they are struggling with so time and fractions and multiplication and division they're the big things so I've then bought some smaller books that are just solely time fractions and multiplication and division that they can really like hone in on those skills and I'll do the same for Bessie on this but um or, and, but Albert will just be working through this and I will probably get him um the I, might, I may get him the targeted practice book if I feel he needs it but um I think once he is once he knows all of his sounds and um and he's and he's you know he's getting there already he knows quite a lot of them so he'll be using that um I will also be using uh, reading eggs um their the reading eggs program he used junior reading eggs when he was l little it's aimed at like two to six year olds and he used that quite a lot um and and then in the last year he's moved up to reading eggs and started learning 
the phonics sounds with that um, and he is getting much he's getting very good and you can see progress um, with that his reading age is correct for his age which is great um, and we are I'm, I'm kind of encouraging him to do that every single day seven days a week uh, just to keep that knowledge fresh in his mind and then he will do this book five days a week um, and then his writing practice he'll be doing I will be making a booklet um, all different ways to write his name so there'll be um, cutting and sticking activities to recognise the letters in his name, there will be tracing worksheets, there'll be big letter A's, there'll be big letter L's, all of that sort of thing. Um, so we can do a page a day learning to write, learning to recognise the letters in his name um, and to write it confidently. Um, we will also do our surname which is um, which is Beale as you'll know if you follow me you've seen me on other social media. Um, and he will be um he will have another booklet where he learns to write his full name so he can write albert beale um very easily uh, that will be our first port of call with his writing just getting him to um uh deal with those letters because obviously all of the letters in our surname are also in his first name so it's not like a two different ones he's learned to write his um his full name we'll then move on to practicing writing and doing handwriting where he'll practice writing individual letters and things like that so my next book that I'll be using with him is daily practice book again but maths so this is just for Albert Bessie will not be doing this one because Bessie is very advanced in maths where she lacks in English she makes up for it in heaps in math there are concepts that she understands that Charles doesn't so she's definitely she's definitely uh oh excuse me very very good Um, yes, so he's starting with numbers, it's all colourful, engaging, and again, it's just one page a day. And again, I will do exactly the same thing, I will use it how I use the mental baths books. If there's anything that I feel that he's um, he needs more focused work on like oh actually he's really good with recognize all these numbers but when he starts to add them together he we need to focus on this a little bit more then I will buy another um another book on the side a smaller book that we can then dip in and out of as and when he needs it so moving on from English and maths the other things that we are doing with him are so the art uh, uh bleh reading a book with Charles every day um, this helps with Charles's reading practice but also um, helps with their sibling bond it also means that Albert gets a book read to him um, well I can do some reading practice with Bessie who needs me to be doing it rather than Charles um, so Charles just reads a book to him um, any book that he likes fiction non-fiction it doesn't matter um, obviously he has the reading eggs I don't let him make him do more than about 15 minutes at a time um, just to give him so he doesn't get um kind of get bored or get overwhelmed with the screens um so, so tired the next thing is a program that i will be introducing to you in a couple of weeks time it's called science with graham um and it's a curricular national curriculum aligned science um video like there's videos there's worksheets so it's a program um it's looking good so far I really enjoyed it and um, when I looked through it through it look through looked through it um and we're going to do that once a fortnight to kind of stretch it out because obviously we don't take holidays in the same way so we're going to do that once a fortnight to stretch it out and then on the other week at the alternate week we will be doing nature study and um, going out especially now the weather's getting nicer going out and learning about nature together um which always I feel like every year brings another level for each child um, so then that will be that's our science it's very light uh, it's optional he doesn't have to join in um, but it's just exposing him to those things and giving him like facilitating that learning so he can learn what he feels he needs to learn at this point so then history and geography this again is an absolutely optional um, subject at the moment for him but all of the children do it on Fridays we go to the library, we go to a Lego club and we will re we will borrow books but they have to pick one book that is non-fiction and that is has a history, geography or sometimes science base and then we read that book together either at the library or at we, we borrow it 
<laughs> we borrow it and we bring it home and then we read the book and if that's read the book together um, and then if that's all we want to learn about then we've done it we've learned that book but if there's a subject that children are particularly interested in we will kind of and go down they want to go down that rabbit hole we will find documentaries we will research more on the internet and so on and so forth to learn more about um the subject and charles has gone down the rabbit hole a few times about a few different things albert not so much but he has asked a lot of questions which has been um really really interesting for everybody sorry my phone is going off sorry about that i was getting messaged about a shed anyway what were we talking about um yes so uh library books library books and they then i hope if they don't want to get a library book they have to watch a non-fictional show so not a cartoon or something like that but like bessie likes to watch um bake off or extreme cake makers or something like that because she loves baking or a cooking show something like that like i will encourage her to watch something like that i won't make her i'm not like sit down watch it i uh, don't do that um and then the boys watch something so recently albert watched something called dancing birds because he really likes birds and after he, i was like what did you learn from the documentary which he calls a denture wenchy um which is amazing you know when kids have those little things that they say and they just think forever like for example we called hardboard eggs ding ding eggs because of albert i'll explain the story another time but now Whenever I want to watch a show, I'm like, oh, I was thinking of watching a, a Dench or Wenchy. <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, yes, yeah, so he watched and he could tell me loads of things about these birds that dance. Their partners. He was like, there's one that goes like this. <laughs> these were its feathers. He was, it was amazing. Anyway, um, and then the chill, he's also going to be cooking with um, me and uh, Orphil on a Thursday lunchtime, depending if Phil's home or not. Probably not. Um, at the moment we're making we're doing pizzas mini pizzas like making mini pizzas on thursday lunch times um because thursday evenings are very busy for us so we have our main meal on a thursday um, at lunchtime and he really enjoyed making his pizza and um yeah so that's what he's concentrating on at the moment and obviously he has forest schools for six hour a week so that's how we're starting him off um it does feel like a lot but actually a lot of it is just normal things that you would do with your child anyway so there's a couple of workbooky things but they're literally one page um pardon me the science or the science is watching a video about science the nature study is going for a walk and looking at stuff um going to the library or watching a documentary show cooking with me um and having a book read to him by his brother that is literally all he's doing right now so um he probably um you know and, and right practicing writing his name that's literally all he's doing right now and obviously that will change but that is how i would suggest that you start end them off start them off small start them off with lots of outside stuff lots of hands-on play um based things and um and go from there so uh, i'm not sure how long this video is going to end up being but uh i i'm done now i have another video to film for my patreon account um that will be coming out probably in may so uh no one's on my patreon account yet but i'm getting these videos stocked up so that when someone does join they will know the more personal things that are going on in my life that i'm only sharing on there for people who are willing to pay for it um uh, obviously that's nobody yet but um who knows who knows anyway um those videos that i'm filming for the patreon will be available um in the summer on this account but uh, we're not quite ready to share what's been get, we're not quite ready to share that in a public forum just yet until um until something's happened or they don't so we'll see anyway i know i'm being cryptic if you want to try and guess in the comments uh go ahead <laughs> um if i put a heart on your comment you might be right if i don't then you're wrong there you go that's that will be our secret messaging with each other uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like home ed content the next episode of this will be what a deep look we will go do a deep look of deregistering what to do if the school goes um no you can't deregister and a really really in-depth look at de-schooling why it's so important and how to do it what it really means and we're also going to talk about de-schooling ourselves because that is just as important as de-schooling your child so i will see you uh, next week the videos are going to be coming out on tuesdays now um gives me a little bit more time in the week to get it done and i realize that today is thursday but uh you know 
at least you got a video. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Um, your support is um, absolutely appreciated all the time. Every time I see views and comments and subscriptions, uh, it makes my day. So please keep doing it. And um, thank you for sticking with me while I've been a bit flaky. I will see you next week. Bye.